online English course this morning. I'm Tias and I'm an editor for Penerbit Erlangga. Nice to see you again. Good morning, Mr. Graham. How have you been? I'm very well, thank you. I'm sorry I was muted. It's okay. Uh, I'm sure you must be happy because Liverpool won the Premier League, right? I was very happy about that. I've been celebrating all week. <laughs> so here Mr. Graham is a huge fan of Liverpool and he is a teacher at an international school and he is also an author of Boom! English Grammar Made Easy. Have you got his book? Don't forget to get one, okay? And do you know that you can watch today's lesson live on YouTube? Our YouTube channel is Erlangga Inspirasi Channel. And you can always replay the videos to review our first and today's lesson. To remind you, this lesson will last for 50 minutes with three sessions. The first session is the tutor's presentation of the material, and then Q&A, and the last is conclusion. Sahabat Erlangga, don't forget to join all the three lessons on, you, on Zoom and do the post-test to get an e-certificate. The post-test will be announced later after the third lesson, so don't forget and don't miss the last lesson. For today's lesson, we will learn about tenses. Using English tenses correctly is really confusing. Or is it only me? Well, hopefully, after this lesson, we can use them properly. If Sahabat Erlangga have any questions about tenses, you can type them on the chat box during Mr. Graham's explanation. And I will choose two questions on the Q&A session. So, Mr. Graham, could you please help us to better understand tenses? I would love to, yes. Um, thank you everyone again for joining the lesson today. Um, we're going to get started. As Ms. Tias mentioned, if you do have any questions during the lesson, then feel free to type them in the chat box. And also at the beginning of the lesson, I'm going to be asking you to type some answers as well. So please have your chat open. So let us make a start. Sorry, you'll just have to bear with me for one moment while I open this. There we go. Okay, so as mentioned before, this is the second of three sessions, which are roughly based on the three sections of English Grammar Made Easy. So, the first session, which I know most of you attended last week, was parts of speech. Today we're going to be learning about tenses. However, before we start, I'm going to ask you guys um, to type into the chat. So, I am going to put a word on the screen. I would like you to type in which part of speech that word is. So, for example, if the word run came up, you would type in verb, okay? So, please don't be shy. Don't be afraid to get it wrong. Okay, so the first word is bandung. What type of word is bandung? Anybody? Okay, I'm going to give people five seconds or so, then I'm going to move on to the next one. Excellent, Priscilla. Bandung is the name of a place, so Bandung is a proper noun. Well done. Okay, we've got a couple more. 
Sleep, easy one. What kind of word is sleep? I'm sure Priscilla knows this. Anyone else? Excellent, Tasha. Sleep is a verb. Well done. Okay, we've got a couple more. A bit more difficult. Carefully. What kind of word is carefully? So I'm going to go on to the next one. Anyone? Okay. Carefully ah. Ah. Tasha again. Super. Just in time. Careful would be an adjective. Carefully is an adverb. And ah, Devi also got the previous one as an adverb. Thank you, Devi. Next one. And there's two possible answers here. I will allow either of them. What kind of word is and? Oh, 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 sorry, Clara also correctly said the previous one was an adverb. Conjunction question mark. Priscilla, it is a, it is a conjunction. We talked last time about connectives. So, and can be a conjunction or a connective. Excellent. Thank you, guys. I'm happy you remembered our content from the previous lesson. We're going to move on now to talk about tenses today. So, in English, there are 16 different tenses. There are four past tenses, four present tenses, four future tenses, and four conditional sentences. Now, conditional sentences are sentences beginning with if, and we don't have time to cover those today. If we have time in the next lesson, then maybe we'll talk briefly about conditionals. So for today, we're going to talk about 12 different tenses, four past, four present, and four future tenses. Um, to understand tenses, we talked last time about verbs. It's important to know that verbs can have four different forms, okay? So the easiest way to talk about them is if we talk about verb one, verb two, verb three, and verb ing. Okay, so for example, verb one, eat, verb two, ate, verb three, eaten, and verb ing is eating. Now, with many verbs, verb two and verb three are the same. So for example, if we had the verb play, it would be play, played, played, playing. Um, something else we need to talk about is subject. Now, the subject of the sentence is either a common noun, a proper noun, or a pronoun. And it's the person or the animal or the thing that is doing the action. So I've got a couple of examples here. The lady walked to work. In this instance, the lady is the subject. Gita and Dinda play tennis every week. Gita and Dinda together do the action. So they are the subject. Okay, now obviously verb forms and subjects are not tenses, but it's important to understand them if you're going to understand tenses. So, um, I've split this not into past and present and future. I think it's easier to understand if we talk about the simple tenses, etc., together. Okay, so the first tense we're going to talk about is simple past tense. Um, simple past tense is used to talk about a finished action in the definite past. That's the easiest definition. So if we're thinking about whether a sentence is in simple past tense, is it finished? Do we know when it happened? If both of those conditions are met, then it is a sentence in simple past tense. 
So we've got some examples here. Um, I have the verb in red, and I've got when the action happened in the past underlined. So I went to Lombok last week. Went is the verb. We can see here it's verb two. Last week is when it happened. So it's a finished action, and we know when it happened. So we know it is simple past. Yesterday, I played football. So yesterday is underlined. That is when the action happened in the past. Played is the verb. Mr. Graham worked in Morocco in 2005. So again, underlined we have in 2005 is when the action happened. And we've got verbs to work. So moving on from simple past to talk about simple present a little bit. Um, simple present is used to talk about habits or routines or facts or opinions. And it's the easiest tense to form because we just use subject and verb one. So we've got some examples here of the different uses of simple present tense. I wake up at 6 a.m. every day. Okay, every day shows us it's a routine. This cycle and we've got usually which tells us it's an happen true about me, this next one. I love Apologies for that. I think I had some technical problems then. We will, we will continue with the PowerPoints. So the sentence we were just talking about, I love K-pop music. So once again, I do not love K-pop music. It's just as an example. We've got I as the subject. We've got the verb love in verb one form. And this is talking about an opinion. The fourth example we've got here of simple present tense. Canberra is in Australia. So this is not an action. This is a fact. So our subject here, we've got Canberra. We've got the verb to be is, and then we've got in Australia to talk about the fact. So even though these are four different uses of simple present tense, we have the same form. We have subject and then verb one. for each of these. Simple future. Um, simple future is used to talk about future plans, plus verb one, or to be going to. Distinction when we have a couple of examples. Next year, I will go to Singapore. Next week, I'm going to visit my first two examples are talking about future plans. The distinction with them is that next year I will go to Singapore is a plan the person has, but it is not definite. Okay, next week I'm going to visit my grandmother is a more definite plan. 
So maybe the person who is speaking in the second sentence has already called up their grandmother, they've already made a plan to visit, they have already booked their train ticket, they've made preparations. Whereas the example with Singapore, it is the person's plan, but they maybe haven't prepared for the plan yet because it's still in the more distant future. We can also use simple future for predictions about the future. So we've got the example here. In 2070, people will live on Mars. Now, nobody knows if this is correct or not. This is a prediction, okay? So going to and then verb one is for definite plans. Will is for plans that are not yet definite or for predictions. Okay, so moving on to continuous tenses. Continuous tenses, again, relatively simple. Past continuous. So it's important to remember that simple past is for a finished action in the past, whereas past continuous is used to talk about an unfinished action at a certain time in the past, okay? So the way we form past continuous tense is subject plus was or were plus verb in. So we've got a situation here. John, sorry, this should be, John went to bed at 9 p.m. John woke at 6 a.m. the next day. Okay, so John had slept for nine hours. At 1 a.m., John was sleeping. So at that time in the past, he had already started the action, but he had not finished the action. So it's an unfinished action. Use it with the subject, John, was, and then verb ing. And we have another example here. Layla started working for Alanga Books in 2006. Layla finished working for Alanga Books in the year 2020. So in 2010, Layla had started the action, but she had not finished the action. So we've got, in 2010, Layla was working for a Langer Books. Okay, so again, we've got the subject, Layla, verb to be in the past was, and then verb in. Present continuous tense. So present continuous tense is used to talk about an unfinished action in the present. Usually, it is something that is happening now. So we form this with subject plus verb to be plus verb ing. I am watching TV at the moment. Okay, so the person speaking here has started watching and they are still watching at the time. So we've got the subject I, we've got the verb to be in the present, am, and then we have verb ing, watching TV. And the fact that we've got at the moment shows us that it's now. And we've got a true sentence, the second one. We are studying English now. So we started studying at 10 a.m. We will finish in about 30 minutes. So the action has started, it has not finished, we use present continuous tense. Danu is driving to work. So in this instance, Danu has left his house, but he has not got to work yet. It's a continuous action. Future continuous tense. So future continuous 
is used to talk about an unfinished action at the point in the future. So you remember with past continuous, it's at a certain time in the past, an action that has not finished. Future continuous is just the same, but it's talking about an, an unfinished action at a point in the future. So let's get on to have a look at a couple of examples. In 2021, I will be living in Cairo. So the person at that point has already started living there and they have not finished living there. An example below, math class starts at 1 p.m. and ends at 2.30 p.m. So at 2 p.m., the class has started, but the class has not yet finished. So we've got the sentence here, at 2 p.m., the students will be studying maths. Okay, getting a little bit more difficult now. So I think probably the simple tenses and the continuous tenses are not that challenging. The perfect tenses and the tenses after that are a little bit more advanced. So perfect tenses. So we use past perfect tense. Very rarely we use it on its own. It's usually used together with simple past tense. So if two actions happen in the past, then past perfect is used to talk about the earlier of the two actions. And we form past perfect tense with the subject plus had plus verb three. And it will be a little bit more easy to understand once we have looked at a couple of examples. So if we've got this person's routine, so at 6.30 a.m., this person has breakfast. At 7.30 a.m., this person takes a shower. Before Woody took a shower, he had eaten breakfast. So the first part of this sentence, Woody took a shower, is simple past tense. The second part is talking about the earlier action, the action that happened at 6.30, and we've got, he is the subject, had, and then verb three. Verb three here is eaten. And we've got the itinerary here for somebody's holiday. 17th of February, the people went to Malang. 19th of February, the people went to Batu. Before Tias and Widi went to Batu, they had visited Malang. So again, the first part of the sentence is in simple past tense. Tias and Widi went to Batu. The second part is the earlier action. They had, and then verb three, they had visited Malang. Present perfect tense. Now, present perfect tense is not that difficult to form, but it can be very confusing in the way that it is used. So we use present perfect to talk about a finished action in the indefinite past. And the reason it's confusing is you would think if it is a present tense, it wouldn't be talking about a completed action. But we'll see when we see some examples about how it is used. The use is very similar to simple past tense, as I mentioned. In simple past tense, we know when an action happened. So if we see some words in the sentence like yesterday, two weeks ago, in 1995, they tell us when the action happened. So if we have those words, it's going to be simple past tense. If we don't know when an action happened in the past, that's when we use present perfect tense. 
So we've got some examples here with simple past and with present perfect, just so the distinction is clear. I went to Bali last year. This is simple past because we know when it happened. I have been to Bali is present perfect because we know it's a finished action in the past, but we do not know when it happened. So this is present perfect tense. I ate Dorian two weeks ago is simple past because two weeks ago tells us when the action happened. I have eaten Dorian is present perfect because we know it happened, but we do not know when. Sometimes when we're talking about actions, it is important when they happened. Sometimes the fact that the action happened is more important than when the action happened. And that is when we use present perfect tense. Um, future perfect tense. Now, future perfect tense um, can be formed in English, but in reality, it is very rarely used. So we'll go through it quickly, but do keep in mind that this is a very unusual tense to use. So we form the tense with subject plus will plus have plus verb three. And you can see that forming these sentences is becoming a little bit more complex. By 10 p.m., I will have finished my science homework. So it's an action that will have been completed by a certain point in the future. By 2023, Liam will have graduated from university. So with both these sentences, we have by, and then we have a point in the future. We have the subject, which is I in the first sentence and Liam in the second sentence, will, have, and then verb three. Okay, in future perfect tense, we always use have and then verb three, never has. Okay, so we're going to look at some continuous tenses now. So perfect continuous tenses. So just like the previous tenses we looked at, we're going to be talking about past perfect continuous, present perfect continuous, and future perfect continuous. So we use perfect continuous tenses for talking about the duration. So duration means how long. So it says here, past perfect continuous tense is used to talk about the duration of an unfinished action in the past. We usually use it when an action in the past was interrupted by another action. So we form this tense with subject plus had, plus been, plus verb ing. Had, been, ing. So we've got an example here, the first one. I had been talking for 25 minutes when I realized my microphone was muted. Hopefully that hasn't happened to me today. So we've got the subject, I had, been, verb ing, and then we've got for, and then we've got the duration of the acts. Okay, so in the, in the first example, 25 minutes is the duration. The second sentence, Michael had been walking for an hour when he fell over. So this is again talking about an interruption. 
So we've got the subject, Michael, had been in for an hour when he fell over. So we've got the duration was an hour. And the third example, Gita had been swimming for five minutes when she saw a shark. So the subject is Gita, had been verb in, and then the duration for five minutes, and then we've got the second part of the sentence. Um, if we think about the perfect continuous tenses, um, present perfect continuous is used to talk about the duration of an unfinished action in the present. Um, past perfect continuous uses for almost all the time. Present perfect continuous can use for and it can use since, okay? So if we have the word for, that will tell us how long the action lasted for. If we use since, that tells us when the action started. So for is going to be a duration of time, since is going to be when the action started. Um, we form it with subjects, plus have or has, plus been, plus verb ing. Okay, so we've got some examples here of present perfect continuous tense. Mr. Graham has been talking for 30 minutes. So we've got the subject, Mr. Graham, has, because it refers to he, been, verb ing, and we've got for, so that means we're going to be talking about duration. The students have been studying Japanese since 2016. So here, because students is plural, we've got have instead of has, been, verb ing, and then this one has got the starting point. So they first studied Japanese in the year that is stated here. So we know that it is since instead of for. Future perfect continuous. Now, future perfect continuous is used a lot more frequently than future perfect. Okay, as I mentioned, future perfect is rarely used. Future perfect continuous is used much more frequently. Um, future perfect continuous tense is used to talk about the duration of an unfinished action at a point in the future. Okay, so at a certain point in the future, the person will still be doing the action. And we form perfect continuous tense with the subject plus will plus have plus been plus verb ing. And that sounds very, very complex, but when you see some examples, it will make more sense. By 9 p.m., I will have been studying for six hours. So at 9 p.m., the person has still not finished studying. It is an unfinished action in the future, and we're talking about the duration. By 2022, 
I will have been living in Jakarta for 20 years. So in the year 2022, the person is still living in Jakarta and they're talking about the duration of the action at the point in the future. Okay, so we've talked about 12 of the 16 tenses this morning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a sentence and I'm going to ask you to think about what tense that sentence is in. Okay, um, if we go through these too fast, it's fine. You can have a look at the video later on Erlanger Inspirasi on YouTube and you can go through them a bit more slowly and you can think about them in a bit more detail. So this is going to be relatively quick. First one, I was driving to work at 7 a.m. So what tense is that in? The second one, I have seen the Avengers movie. And the third one, I like strawberry ice cream. Getting a little bit more difficult. Brian will buy a PlayStation 5 in November. Brian will buy a PlayStation 5 in November. The next one. Before TS went shopping, and I'm asking you for the tense of the second part of this sentence. She had taken a Gojek to the mall. She had taken a Gojek to the mall. And the sixth question, she has been playing video games for six hours. She has been playing video games for six hours. Next one, by next year, I will have been learning karate for five years. By next year, I will have been learning karate for five years. Next question, the dog had been chasing the cat for an hour when the cat scratched him. The dog had been chasing the cat for an hour when the cat scratched him. And finally, I drank coffee this morning. So that's the final checkup question. And that brings us to the end of the presentation today. I am looking forward to answering some of your questions now. Okay, um, so Ms. Ts, shall I just go ahead and answer some of these questions? Because I can see some excellent questions. Uh, not yet. Uh, okay. A second, please. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, because I have a question for the participants here. So, uh, have you participated in the Erlanga English Speech Contest? Because you should hurry and win the prize. We have 10 million rupees for the winner. All you have to do is uh, to upload your videos on Instagram and, or YouTube and then share the link to us because the audition will be online this year. This contest is open for students of primary schools, junior high schools, senior high schools, and vocational schools. You can just one of the topics listed here, they are health, environment, technology, education, and culture. If you have any questions about this event, you can contact Kenny on 0857-1810-9404 or our customer service 
at zero one. I'm sorry, zero eight one nine one one five double zero double double eight five. This is only available on WhatsApp, or you can also check on our Instagram at Buku Erlangga and our website www.erlangga.co.id slash EESC 2020. So now we can move on to the next session. Uh, I will choose two people here. The first question is from um, Priscilla Sani. Okay. Please. Okay, sir. Yes. I wanna ask you what the difference is uh, between four and two, because in present perfect continuous, uh, uh, there is uh, some. Uh, I still confused about that. Four okay. and two, and since I wanna. Uh, now again about that. Okay, um, great question. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, so we don't usually use for with present perfect continuous. The the prep the, the words that we use with present perfect continuous are for and since. So mm -hmm. if we use for, that is when we're talking about how long. Oh, wow. So for might be followed by one hour or five minutes, or 10 years. Um, if we use since, that is talking about when the action first started. Okay, so since would be the time when the action started. So if we think of an example about this class today, we have been studying for 40 minutes, that's talking about how long. We have been studying since 10 a.m. That is the time when we started. Okay, so four is for how long. Since is for the time that the action first started. Is it since more specific or no? Um, well, sometimes you would want to talk about the about the duration about how long okay so i have been studying maths for three hours i'm so bored sometimes you would want to talk about the time when the action started so i have been studying math since 6 a.m okay so they're both quite specific but sometimes you want to tell people how long you've been doing something and sometimes you want to tell people when you first started doing the action. Mm. Okay, so that's when we use for and since. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, Priscilla. Thank you, sir. Okay, that's a good question. And now for the second question, we have Clara Tabita Pelupesi. Please, Clara. Hello, Hello Clara. I want to ask you how to quickly remember part one, part two, and part three. Maybe you have six and three. Thank you. <laughs> okay, but thank you for your question, Clara. I think that you might not like my answer, though. Um, so there are two types of verbs. Um, some of the verbs are what we call regular verbs. And if a verb is a regular verb, we just add ed to make it verb number two and for verb number three. So for example, study, studied is verb two and studied is also verb three. So if the verb is what we call a regular verb, then it's very easy to remember how to make verb two and how to make verb three. But unfortunately, English is not always an easy language. So some verbs are what we call irregular verbs. And 
irregular verbs, verb two and verb three are different and they do not have a pattern that we can learn. Okay, so that means that when we learn new verbs, we have to learn what is verb two and what is verb three. So in my, in my presentation, I had the verb eat. Now, if it were a regular verb, then it would be eat, eated, eaten. But we know that that's not correct, don't we? So it is eat, and then verb two is eight, and verb three is eaten. And so for irregular verbs, you just have to learn the different forms. So if you're asking me for some tips about how to make verb two, verb three, I would say, if you really do not know, then just add ed and hope that it's a regular verb. Okay, but the, the honest answer I can give you is verbs are hard and we have to learn the different verb forms when we learn new verbs. I'm sorry, Clara, I wish there was an easy way. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Clara, I'm really glad that you asked this question because I also want to know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but maybe we need to learn more about English. <laughs> And now it's time for me to conclude our lesson. So here from Mr. Graham's explanation, we know that there are 16 types of tenses with four big categories. They are past tenses, present tenses, future tenses, and conditional tenses. As we understand the functions of each tense, we should make it a habit to use them properly. And eventually we will own it. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Graham, for today's lesson. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And I look forward to seeing you next Thursday for our final English lesson. Particularly thank you to the people who asked me such great questions again. All right. And for Sahabat Erlangga, don't forget to join our last lesson, as Mr. Graham already reminded us. Because we will learn about idioms. This is interesting and I can't wait for it. And before I close today's lesson, I want to remind Sahabat Erlangga that we have English books to help you learn English well. Wait a second. I will show you the book. Mm. Uh, Second, please. Yeah. Okay, here. These are the books. We have full English Grammar Made Easy, Pathway to English, and English Assessment Test. If you want to learn more about grammar, especially tenses and other other and other things. Boom is the right book, and we have the version of Pathway to English. Uh, the regular one is for all students of senior high school, and the second version is uh, for the elective program. So if you are taking English as your elective class, you can use this book. And to test your English mastery, you can use English assessment test. These books are available at the nearest bookstore, or you can buy them online. So finally, this is the end of our second uh, This is the end of our second lesson today. You can watch this lesson again on our YouTube channel, Erlangga Inspirasi Channel. And stay safe, stay healthy, and see you next week. Bye bye. Bye guys. Thank you.